My name's Alone and welcome to another Serious Hero episode and I'm about to complete the A Tale of Two Cats quest which is a requirement for the Dragon Slayer 2 quest which is uh, the goal for this video or at least one of the goals for this video. I'm pretty sure I can complete all the requirements in this video and also the quest even though it's a pretty long quest. But uh, I think I will get some experience lamps for this, two quest points, mysterious present. I guess the experience lamps are in this present. Yeah, there you go. Mouse toy. I'm not sure what that is supposed to be. But then uh, I'll put these on rune crafting. 2.5k experience and maybe 2.5k again. Yeah, 5,000 experience for a pretty easy quest is very nice. Such a massive relief. This is the main reason why I've been kind of demotivated to do Dragon Slayer 2. The fact that I had to complete Lunar Diplomacy. And now it is done. 5,000 runecrafting experience, pretty good as well. So um, from two quests, 10,000 runecrafting experience. By the way, before I do the Dream Mentor quest, I think I have all the requirements for it, by the way. Yes, I do. And after that, I have every single requirement for the quest except for 62 crafting, which, uh, look at this, I'm 61. Very easy level to get. But before that, I'm just gonna show you guys something. Look at this, they updated the models of the Divine Potions, so they are in a similar size to the normal ones. Before they were way smaller, but now they ma just made them bigger basically. Uh, I think it looks kind of scuffed, but at the same time, I mean, it does make more sense. And we're back here again to hand in the Dream Mentor quest, which was extremely easy. Took me like 25 minutes to do. And uh, let's see, might be it, like some time before it's actually done. But I will get some decent experience from this. And uh, unfortunately, the experience lamp that you get right here is uh, actually only usable on combat experience. So that kind of sucks. So only combat experience for this quest. I'm not even sure what I should use it on because you can't actually use it on prayer. You can only use it, well, you can't actually use it on attack either, it seems. So strength, ranged, magic, hit points, defense. Yeah, I guess I have to put it on defense because the other ones are, yeah, mages so fast anyway, so I'll just put it on defense. It's only 15k, so it's not a massive amount, but um, yeah, only one crafting level away from Dragon Slayer 2. Just made a couple of earth battle staves for 62 crafting. Time for the big one, Dragon Slayer 2. It is a two hour quest guide, so just a tad bit shorter than the Song of the Elves. It is time for the Vorkath part of the quest. I decided to go with a ranged setup, but I'm very unsure if that's actually better than a Dragon Hunter Lance. I'm going to assume that a Dragon Hunter Lance is better. I've seen quite a lot of people use that, but just because it's the first time, I feel more secure doing it with a ranged. Well, that wasn't as hard at all, actually. Uh, I'm going to assume you get no loot for this, of course, as it is during the quest. I don't know if this is how hard the boss actually is, so if you're going to kill it after the quest, which I'm very interested in. That didn't count as a kill count, so maybe there are mechanics that are not included, but we will have to see what happens. Actually, way easier than I anticipated. I have seen a lot of people struggle with this. I do understand that if you're like a hardcore Iron Man, it would be a pretty scary challenge because if you do screw up once, you're just instantly dead from the one-shot fire beam. Or not fire beam, the uh, fireball that he shoots up. But as a main account, and I don't really feel any risk, it was definitely way easier than uh, I anticipated. Okay, so here we have the quest completed, 5 quest points and a decent amount of experience. I'm not sure if I gained any levels from that. No, I didn't. Okay, but if I pass through here now, I can also gain, I think, 100,000 experience in any combat stat except for prayer. I just have to find the, uh, the one I should talk to. I think it's Edlen. And then yes, please. And I'm not sure what skill I should put this on. I guess I'll just put it on defense again. Yes, please. Oh, you have to do it four times. That is kind of obnoxious. But um, yeah, that is the Dragon Slayer 2 now completed. And it is time to try out some Vorkath. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to buy Mythical Capes. They are 10k each and they're actually pretty good. So I'm going to buy like three of them. 
Look at the stats on that. That is 8 in all defenses, 6 crush bonus, which is actually very good for, for example, Veteon if you decide to kill him with that uh, PvP maze. Okay, so that's the first Warcath kill, and it is definitely harder than in the quest. What is the value of this loot, actually? I really want to check. 116k. So that is definitely pretty good, but I do want to try ranged ones because I do feel like melee is... Uh, it's probably very good if you're good at Warcath, but if you're new to it, I think ranged is easier, so I'm gonna try it with Void. Alright, well, it definitely feels a bit easier to do it with ranged, but I'm still, of course, taking a lot of damage. Like, I use pretty much my full inventory of sharks there, so I will still have to practice quite a bit. The kill time was 324, so a bit faster. Bit of a more valuable drop this time, 161k dragon plate legs. I think this drop overall is probably like 200k from one single kill, that is insane. Because I actually want to do quite a lot of Warcath, I'm going to sell my Dragon Hunter Lance, and with the money that I have right now, I can actually buy a Dragon Hunter Crossbow, which is a very big upgrade compared to a Dragon Crossbow that I tried using for a bit. 108 million. And with that, I would love to have a Dragonfire Ward, but I'm not sure if I can get enough money to actually buy one. I might think about selling like my BCP just for now, and then I'll sell uh, the Dragonfire Ward again when I'm getting back to raiding, because I do need this for raiding. But I think that's what I'm going to do as I'm going to be killing Warcat for a while. Okay, that is a difference. 151 with this setup. I actually didn't expect it to be that insane. Look how much food I still have left. I'm not even going to fit all the loot in my inventory. And I don't even have a Salve Amulet, so I might actually think about getting that as well. Uh, that's going to be pretty insane. That's 20% more damage. So you can get 50% because the Dragon Hunter Crossbow is 30% accuracy. And with the Salve Amulet you would have 50%. So I could probably get like up to 130 kills then. That would be insane. Very easy quest, the Haunted Mine definitely worth completing, I just have to cut this. 22,000 strength experience is actually a surprise, that's a lot of experience. Already 99 though, but uh, yeah, I b will be able to make a Salve Amulet now with this Salve Shard, but I do still need to imbue it. I think I have to do either a mini quest for it, and maybe I even have to do Nightmare Zone, but now that I've completed the Dream Mentor quest earlier in the video, I actually have one of the best points creatures uh, in the Nightmare Zone, so it shouldn't be too bad even if I have to do that. The Tarn's mini quest is now done, and if I use this diary on this, I can make all of my Salve Amulets into Enchanted. Now the problem is, all of these are actually for melee, that's how the uh, Enchantment or Salve Amulet in general works. But if I, as I said earlier, go to the Nightmare Zone and get 800,000 points, I can actually make it into a ranged and a magic one. So I'm going to do that. I have zero points right now, I think. Uh, but as I said, I will just do the Dream Mentor one and I should probably be able to get 800,000 points within the hour. I was getting about 1.5 million points per hour with the current quest bosses that I have, which is very good points compared to the last time I did Nightmare Zone, which was a very long time ago when I was getting 200,000 points per hour. So I have 950,000 points now and I actually got a bit more than I needed because I'm going to imbue that, so now I have that. But I'm also going to buy as many of these as I can because uh, I will make these into Releka Teleports. That is a lot actually, 196. Uh, because I do think that's currently the best way I can get to a Vorkath. Oh my god, 117! That's like, oh, this boss is more profitable than Solra, and I can get even faster kills. That is, okay, I'm going to get stuck into this boss like crazy. Finally, 50 kill count for the Vorkath head, so I'm just going to go and get my Assembler, which is the best in slot ranged attack bonus cape in the game, so that is a very, very nice upgrade. So let's compare the upgrade now, 4 ranged strength, 1 defense slash and 4 magic defense stats. So let's upgrade it to the assembler and that is now 8 and then a bunch of defense bonuses but the big thing is of course the ranged attack and the ranged strength. 
Well, I don't actually need a second one, but uh, I guess I can bank it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if I do lose my assembler, I guess I do need another one. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but yeah. You get one every 50 kills, and then sometimes you can just randomly get one. I think it's 1 in 50 drop rate, but I'm not exactly sure. This is why Vorkath is so good. This is a 400k in one single kill that took me... 1 minute and 41 seconds. And that is now 100 KC on Vorkath done. Pretty quick I would say and let's check the profit. The thing with Vorkath is it is extremely consistent money and you don't really get any rares at all. Like Solra is uh, a bit lower money than Vorkath per kill. As you can see here in 100 kills I got 14.3 mil so 140k per kill which is about the average. And the thing, the difference kind of between Vorkath and Solra is that Vorkath over a very long period of time is better money than Solra. But Vorkath doesn't really have any rare drops. I mean, you get the 1 in 5000 dra Dragon Visage, or whatever it's called. And that is like 24 mil, but it's 1 in 5000 drop rate. So it's very, very rare that you would actually get one of those. Meanwhile, Soldra has a way more common drop rate for the rares, but uh, they are only worth like 4 million, and the average drop is worth more on Vorkath. So, the difference if you're wondering between those two bosses, which are of course pretty much the easiest and fastest money per hour in Old School RuneScape, is that Vorkath is more consistent and Soldra is potentially higher sp spikes of profit, but less in the long run. Okay, the first rare drop I've got so far, 117 KC, unfortunately it's the Dragon Bone Necklace. It is the most common one, so it's not that bad. It is only worth 60k though, well, almost 70k. So what I actually want to do is, I have just got 150 Vorkath kills, and I actually want to try to just do 150 Solra just to compare. Of course it is going to be pretty RNG based, if I get a rare from Solra the loot is going to be probably worth more, but just for the fun of it I do want to compare the two different bosses. I'm actually not going to do 150 kill counts, but I did 100 kill counts, I'm now at 600 KC, and my kill timers are about like 2 minutes, 2 minutes, 2 minutes. 147 and this is the gear setup that I'm using a ring of suffering with this setup with a serpentine helmet and then for the magic gear I have an 8 way switch so I have like 8 magic and then 7 ranged but uh, let's actually have a quick look at the loot here because this is very interesting I didn't get a rare so that does make sense that I would get way less money from Sol Solra than I get from Vorkath but look at this 150 kills is 21 million and from uh, 100 kills I get 10 million, so there is obviously a vast difference in the profit you get from Vorkath and Solra, but as I said earlier, of course the rares spike up the price from Solra. But the kill time with the Dragon Hunter crossbow is actually faster on Vorkath, and on Solra I have to, just let me uh, change the scene, um, on Solar I have to click on this one, yes, and then teleport here, and then I have to go through the animation of running all the way here, and then I can click on the boat again, and there's an animation there as well. With Vorkath, all you have to do is just click him, and he just respawns again instantly after you kill them. So I'm very sure that the GP per hour is pretty vastly better from the Vorkath boss, unless you're like insanely lucky of course at Solar with the uh, rares. The last thing I want to do in this video is some rune dragons. I bought back my dragon hunter lance and I also bought tacits actually with the money that I just made from Vorkath and Solra. And I still actually have uh, 10 million GP in the bank which is very nice, just some pure profits from that. It was a good, very good test for my bank to do that. But uh, yeah, let's kill some rune dragons. And the thing with rune dragons is they're not insanely good money per hour. They're pretty decent. I think they're like 1.4, 1 million per hour. But can be a bit more if you pay attention. But they are very AFK. So I'm going to try to just see what the money per hour is on these. If you're paying attention quite a lot. And you're using this setup for a lot of uh, strength instead of just, just CCR. Which is more AFK that these guys are using. By the way, if you're wondering, the way I'm actually going to travel to a bank and back here is through a dig site pendant. If I rub this, I will be able to go to this place, like, pretty much just outside this place. And then I'll use a dual ring to clan wars and then teleport back again after I've banked. 
The problem is, of course, I don't have a full tier rejuvenation pool in my house because I'm only 70 construction. But that is, of course, a, a goal I will go for in the future. Oh my god, Dragon Limbs is a 1 in 800 drop rate. And I am 44 minutes in. That is pretty lucky. I'm actually now done with 3 hours of Rune Dragons. I thought that would be a nice point to stop just to see how much I actually got in these 3 hours. And let's have a look at the loot. So 157 kill count in that time, so roughly 50 kills per hour. And I gained 7.68 million. And of course, uh, quite a lot of that is from the Dragon Limbs. But I did check what the value would be if I didn't get them, and it is about 32,000 GP per kill, and with them 49,000 GP per kill. So I would say it's about 40k per kill on average if you would kill thousands of them, which is actually not bad at all. So before we have a look at the slides and end the video, I just got an adamant dragon task, which is the first one, and I kind of reset my tracker. And I want to try to get 99 Slayer in the next video, which is going to be quite a huge accomplishment. And I am 1.1 million experience off that and hopefully make a lot of money during it. So on the first slide, we completed Vorkath and added 150 kill count to that and also 100 kill count to Solra. So the only bosses I have left on this slide is the Nightmare and the Corporal Beast. On the second slide there is no progress, but you can see that the only bosses I have left is the Inferno and the Theater of Blood. So as soon as I complete the Corporal Beast and the Nightmare on the first slide, I will go to Theater of Blood and when that is done, I will do the last one which is the Inferno. But that is it for this video, I am really happy with all the progress that I made in this video, I have been putting off the Dragon Slayer 2 quest for quite a while, and I feel like super motivated now to be able to soon finish off the last bosses which are very interesting bosses like Corporal Beast, the Nightmare which has of course a chance of giving bank loot, I'm really interested in Theater of Blood as well, but I will need a team for that, so if anyone is interested in playing Theater of Blood with me in the future and you're experienced, then you can comment in the comment section below about that, or you can join my Discord, which will be in the link on the top of the description. You can join that and you can message me over there, and we might be playing in the future, which would be very fun. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Leave a like if you did and click any of the videos on the screen now if you want to support me in watching more of my content or in general you just want to watch more of my stuff. So goodbye, see you in the next one guys, take care.